from Leonard Victor Waters is um, probably a pretty famous Camilleroy man. He was the first and only Aboriginal fighter pilot in the Second World War. Being a young boy that left school at 14, along with his brother, my dad, um, Donald, and um, went to work for their father, sort of ring barking and shearing and um, things like that. And uh, they actually both joined up to um, join the armed forces at the same time. So we bade them farewell that day and they went to uh, Brisbane and the rest is history. There's a lot of um, accolades around the place, postage stamps, aerograms, uh, streets, parks, and even the Warramai Hornet, which is an F-18 fighter with all indigenous colours all over it and his name on the cockpit. Uncle Len did about um, 95 sorties or 95 missions and he graduated from being a ground mechanic when he first went there to when he left the Air Force, um, he'd actually um, attained the rank of warrant officer, which is probably equivalent to sergeant. What was it like to fly the Kitty Hawks? Oh, they were unreal. They were. Like, I mean, they, they didn't have the same power as a, as a Spitfire or, or a Mustang or a Thunderbolt, but uh, we actually had the best record against the Japs. Len Waters was stunned when his daughter, preparing his biography, discovered he was Australia's only Aboriginal fighter pilot. He was shot seven times, flying against the Japanese from Dutch New Guinea to Borneo. Moratai was one of those um, places where you know, fighting was pretty heavy and um, there's a lot of um, uh, horrific stories about that place. They were captured back off the Japanese and uh, so they set up their main base there and that's where he did most of his flying from. The moment he got his wings, there was um, a kitty hawk that was actually named Black Magic. And um, another pilot who was actually flying Black Magic actually got pretty crook. So they had to fly him back to the mainland. And meanwhile, the commander said, well, he's a plane here and it's a good luck charm, I think, because it's named Black Magic. One of the anti-aircraft um, shells actually um, lodged between his um, seat and fuselage, but it didn't explode. If it hit six inches one way or the other, you wouldn't be interviewing me here today. <laughs> and he had a bit of a giggle about it and sort of said, well, it was the only first time ever that I didn't have to uh, wait on anybody to get off the tarmac to land. He said everybody had taken off for the hills. Len was a hero and it came back, but was brought suddenly to earth when he found out that he was, when he came back, he was just another black man. And, you know, when they fought, they fought gallantly and they come back thinking that they were liberators, only to get back and find out that they weren't even liberated. Len was very disheartened when he came home and, and found he couldn't get a job and carry on his flying career. They were still, you know, blacks that had to go back to the mission way of life, back to shearing. Mr Waters has retired to Cunnamulla. He doesn't fly anymore, but the western skies he watches are big. How old was he when he died? 73, wasn't he? Yeah, that's what I reckon. He'd be in his 70s there. Yeah. yeah. The true legacy, though, is that and if he can do that in times of real trial and triumph over that, yeah, in today's world, Aboriginal people can achieve just about anything that they dream of.